Photo Joseph here. These are all the short stories I created while at NAB, and I'm posting them here together so you can see them all at once. At the end, I'll tell you where to go to see how these were made and where you can see more on Aaron Parecki's channel. I'm on the Laowa booth right now. You may have seen my video on the nanomorphs recently. Well, now we're going with even bigger anamorphic lenses. There's a new 1.5, 2X squeeze, and a parfocal zoom non-anamorphic lens. Let's let Stephen tell us all about them. So certainly the, the uh, 1.5 squeeze nanomorphs last year, super, super popular. We've, we've shipped a ton of those. This year we've announced our new Proteus series. This is a 2X squeeze anamorphic, still super 35 coverage. Here we've got a set of 35, 45, 60, and 80 millimeter focal lengths. Uh, also at the show here at NAB, we are uh, announcing that we're gonna add a 20 millimeter, an 80 millimeter, a 100, and a 35 into that Proteus lineup to really round that one out. Um, also still available, uh, blue flare, silver flare, or the amber flare. Um, you get to choose based on the coatings that you want which flare you're gonna get. So these guys are certainly our, our signature feature piece this year um, on the, the Proteus 2X squeeze anamorphics. Um, but then also we still do have the 1.5 squeeze anamorphics, but we've got the Ranger here. This is the 75 to 180, and we also have a 28 to 75. Um, those are the parfocal zoom, full frame coverage, beautiful, beautiful, simple set. I don't have pricing, but it is going to be very enticing. What about pricing on the 2X squeeze? On the 2X, the I mean, this is looking like a cook lens. This is a monster here. The, the Proteus, these guys are 5,000 a piece. You can buy them in sets and get a little bit of a discount there depending on what you go. But certainly at that price point for what you're getting, what you can do with these guys, it's very, very impressive. That it is. Awesome. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm at NEB with my buddy. What's your name again? Josh Yo Yo Josh Yo? <laughs> Something like that. What do you got here, Josh? You're showing off your new rig here at the Condor Blue Booth. Yeah, so uh, the Orbit, the latest thing is the new cinema arm attachment, which basically, when we did the Kickstarter for Orbit, we had the regular arms. They could hold like 10 pound camera weight fully extended, but the motor itself is way overbuilt. It actually can hold my body weight. I've tested it. My partner won't like me saying that, but it <laughs> de definitely does. Don't try this at home. Yeah, but so we made a new cinema arm attachment that can slide any length speed rail through and we've tested it up to 40 feet so you can imagine 40 foot diameter and you are now having an insanely cinematic experience you just have to tether it to something either on the ceiling so what we found is a slack line works so if you're using a slack line or ratchet straps in like an industrial warehouse you can't tether to the ceiling that'll totally work or you, like you can build the truss like they have here for live events you know music venues that kind of thing so that's kind of what we're looking at they have it set up so it's kind of perched down. This is a real kind of fun uh, camera to cloud thing that they're doing as well where uh, you can record yourself on there and then you just scan the QR code and it'll be sent to your email. Condor Blue, they set it up. We're at the Condor Blue booth, so if you're at NEB, come by Condor Blue and check this out and say hello to the man. Come get your recording. Come get your recording. Josh, what's your channel? Make Art Now. Make Art Now. And light booth, and as you guys know, I'm a big fan of nan lights. I got a bunch of them in my studio. Thanks to gentlemen like Barry here. How's it going, buddy? How are you, sir? I'm good. Oh, I'm glad you talk about what is new, what you're talking about here at NAB that's super exciting. Yes, exactly. So we've updated our Forza line. What we've done is that we've taken kind of everything that everybody said, hey, I wish it did this or I wish it did that, and they've put that into the new line. Give me an example. Okay, so say for instance, cables. Everybody always talked about, hey, I, want, I wish the cable was a little longer. I wish the power cable was, you know, 16 feet. That's what they did. They said, you know what? That's what we're going to do. Also, we also updated the actual uh, control units. They made them a lot easier, more compact, more easy to use, as well as being able to just kind of set things up for battery, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, connectors were updated. So the Forza line kind of had a refresh to it. And you said controlling from a panel, but you can control it from a Bluetooth device as well, right? Yes, you were correct. Now, what they ended up doing was now everything can be controlled via Bluetooth. All of our lights have a Bluetooth chip inside that allows you to be able to control it either on a one-to-one -one solution with your phone or your device, uh, or you can set it up through our WSTB1 control box and do 500 lights if you want to. 
Wow, that's awesome. So I know there's something else you want to show us on the color tube lights, the Pavo tubes. Let's head over there and check yes. those out. Now, these are the Pavo tubes, and you go from this tiny little, what is that, like, that's a foot? That's a 10 inch. 10 uh, inch? And then this, eight feet tall? Eight foot tube. Can you imagine that? I know, it's great, right? I mean, any type of tube that you would need for any type of situation, that's what's really cool. Now, you know, I mentioned we have the new C-Series, and kind of what we did with the fours is we updated them. We, we, we made them uh, so they're much brighter, actually, almost 10% brighter than the old uh, units were. Uh, they added some new control features. They made it so that the they won't turn off as easy as they used to. Um, and But they've made the control options, again, Bluetooth. They have DMX in them now, so you can use an adapter and DMX the lights. And made it so that everybody can use this type of fixture. Because we all know we love Pavo tubes. That's awesome. Yeah, I absolutely love these. I use them all the time. They're fantastic. Thank you very much. We'll see you next year at NAB once again. Yeah, always good to see you. We're on the Deity booth where, as you know, they make amazing microphones. More recently, they've been making some time code tools, and now they put the two together into this amazing little microphone. Tell us what we've got. So this is a 32-bit stereo recorder, which means you can do two lavaliers into it if you have a Y split, or you can stare into a microphone into it. Here I've got a single mono lavalier going in. It's 32-bit float, which means you're not going to distort. And because this is so small, it will drop into your pocket. It locks up, so you can't accidentally stop the recording. So if you throw it in someone's pocket, you're good to go. Battery life is going to be 30 hours, 300% more than the competitors on the market. And what's really great about this is micro SD card up to 128. So it's easily going to hold all your audio for your shoots. Great for the TikTokers out there who want great audio and not want to distort a clip, but also don't want to worry about audio when you're actually doing the fun stuff like shooting video. And then how does the time code integrate with this? And I think there's something about an app, right? So it integrates with an app, so you can trigger up to 20 of these boxes at once into a phone, iOS and Android, but also you can do a timecode box like our TC1, hit the sync pulse on it and all 20 units would sync up to a single timecode signal. So in your editing software, they're always gonna perfectly align. That is fantastic. If you're at NAB, come by the show floor and check this out, and if not, check them out online. I'm on the Black Magic booth and DaVinci Resolve has been updated to 18.5. I'm here with my buddy Sean. What is new? Well, there are a number of things, but if I start at the top, I probably want to focus on the speech to text, which we can generate in subtitles directly in a timeline. We can generate speech to text as transcription into the media pool on clips. This also allows us to search and then to create text-based selections for our editing. So you're basically editing by text with this tool now? It's a, it's a paper cut. It's very simple. We just transcribe the audio in the media pool, and it shows us a new window. We can select the text that we want. It creates a subclip or a duration marker clip for us. We can edit right to the timeline from there. We can export that as text as well, so if we need to keep a copy of our scripts. Absolutely amazing. I heard there's also a new relighting tool. I haven't gotten to see that one yet. Tell me about yes. that. So Relight is another neural engine tool that we have. It's DaVinci Neural Engine, which is an AI-powered tool. And uh, Relight is basically using a combination of things, but uh, essentially look at a depth map that's determining this depth on the 2D frame. Relight then allows us to add a 3D volumetric light to cast more light into the scene after shooting it. It's really impressive. Yeah. That's amazing. I cannot wait to see that one. So there's also some new stuff in Fairlight, ganging clips together so they can be muted and, and controlled at once? Correct, yeah. So this is a new way that we can control them in groups. Uh, it makes it a lot more flexible. In fact, uh, you can select the group that controls the whole fader control. Um, they'll fly from automation as well. There's a lot of things that the groups basically make uh, a little bit easier to you know manage multiple tracks in your edit. And then in Fusion, I know there's a new node, a multi-node or something like that. It's supposed to make it, is this to make it easier to composite multiple nodes together? Well, I mean, essentially, as nodes are very flexible right now, it's just um, what we ended up with is a multi-merge tool that allows you to see in this one node that you can stack several different layers. In fact, you control layer order in this node, uh, you can control layer visibility in this node, and unlike what you can do in, say, a merge 3D node, these are just 2D plane nodes, so this is a very simple vertical stack composite, and you know, among other places, this is one of the ways that, that that's improved. Awesome. And as usual, this is a free update to Resolve. So whether you're using Resolve that's free or Resolve Studio that's the paid version, you still get this update. That is awesome. Thank yes. you very much, Sean. Thank you so much. We're on the Synology booth checking out the latest NAS, the DS1823XS+. This is a 
tabletop NAS with 10 gig support, and Catherine's going to tell us all about it. So it's an eight bay unit. Uh, the 18 actually uh, means that it has eight drive bays, but it's expandable with two five bay expansion units. It has built in 10 gig, uh, has two NVMe slots, so you can actually add two NVMe drives for a storage pool or for a read write cache. Uh, it supports uh, quite a bit of RAM. It's actually like a, a server grade processor in this tiny little unit that you can put in your house. And this is all running on 10 gig NAS, so what that means is you can edit your footage over the network, which we're gonna see right now. Now we're on an editing station running Premiere that is connected to that NAS, and the files we're playing back right now are? They're ProRes 4444XQ. Uh, so these are not small files? No, 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 and we've got multiple streams coming off of the NAS at the same time, and we can scrub back and forth like nobody's business, start and stop on a dime, works just great over the network. Perfect, and this is the way that I'm editing now in my studio. I actually have one of their NASAs in my studio and it is fantastic. Yeah, this is so cool. This is something that when they launched Atmos Connect last year, I first announced it, uh, immediately I had this idea. Uh, my buddy Aaron Parecki and I, who, who's been doing this with me this week, uh, he and I had this idea that we could shoot stories from the show floor, shoot video on the show floor, have it edited and delivered next day why wait till next day have it done in real time so this is literally what we're doing right here and that's what this rig is right here so uh, just to kind of go through what's happening on, on the surface I'll, i'm going to go through it twice but the the surface sur uh, area here is we're shooting the camera mounted vertically which is recording into the i was five on a beautiful cage on a beautiful condor blue cage absolutely gorgeous fabulous cage love the color routine so it's recording into the ninja five plus here and on the back of that is the, so this is this round, is the Atmos Connect. And the Atmos Connect is currently tethered by Ethernet into this backpack here. So we lift this up. So this backpack, this is a Scalera bonded cellular system. And now people see this and like, oh, you have to have that. No, you need a, a connection to the internet, right? So that can be Wi-Fi. Um, it can be tethered Ethernet. Or you can link it to your phone and do a cellular connection. Here at NAB, why even Wi-Fi doesn't work? Like nothing uh, works here, right? We've so, had a lot of problems here at this point. Yeah, it's just way too much interference. So that's why we are, uh, for one, using a tether. Uh, the Ethernet cable here is tethering in, so that we don't have to Wi-Fi into this backpack. Although we could, right? But it's just too around here, too sketch. And then this, of course, is giving us that high-speed bonded cellular connection to get a signal out to the internet. So, by the way, screenshot, get that QR code. So you want to go to that QR code because okay. that has an explainer of what's going on here as well as a link to see the footage. So, all right, so we're shooting here. This Atlas Connect is uploading the footage to the cloud, to Frame.io. We have an editor in Los Angeles who pulls the footage down as soon as it hits and starts editing it. He's putting those out as vertical shorts that he sends back to us by Frame.io for approval. We approve them, and then we got another person who takes the approved video, uploads them to our social accounts, tags them, and does all that good stuff. Day three of NAB, I'm on the Condor Blue booth with something very exciting that I've known was coming, but I am so stoked to be able to finally show you guys this. This is remarkable, and I'm gonna let my man from Condor Blue, tell me all about it. What do we got here? Well, we both have good friends over at Panasonic, and they're the ones who came to us and said, hey, these Pro Blades from SanDisk are legit. These are the drives that we want to be recording on all of our GH6 and S52X cameras. They said, there's no way to use them on a camera yet. Is there something that you can do? So we talked with Western Digital and SanDisk, collaborated to figure out how to get this done, and here it is at the show. There's only four in existence, but we'll have them available really soon here, uh, probably end of May, early June. Basically, you're able to use these pro blade sand disc handles and slide them right into your rig this is seamless it slides right on with the NATO rail it goes through USB-C down right into your camera so it works with any of the cameras that do USB-C recording to SSD it also works as a side handle so if you slide it off the NATO here you can invert the plate put it on the side here invert it so it's a nice side handle you could have the drive sticking up or you could have the drive sticking down it won't slide off so we've nested in the USB-C connector into the NATO rail right here. It already protects the cable because it's a right angle. And once you put a NATO rail on there, a NATO device, it won't come off at all. So that's going to be important for obviously your recording and your data. But the whole bottom is a NATO rail as well. So you can slide the whole thing front to back. It's just super versatile. Well, congratulations. This is a hell of a product. I know a lot of people are going to love this one. It is very cool. We're on the Sennheiser booth at NAB, and before I hand this over, I want to point out, I am using a Sennheiser mic here. We have had zero interference problems. This mic has been rock solid. Sennheiser makes great stuff, and they got something new for us. Chris is going to tell us all about it. 
All right, thank you. So yeah, real quick, we'll take a look at our Evolution Wireless Digital Portable, or EWDP. It's the next product in the Evolution Wireless Digital line. It's got a very small form factor diversity receiver that can mount either on a magnetic cheese plate or on shoe mounts. It comes with all the cables that you need. You can power it with USB, the rechargeable battery, also double A's. It works with our EWD transmitters. So we have body pack systems, handheld systems. We also have a plug on coming out in October, which is really exciting. One key thing about this is a fully digital transmission path and the control, we also have a smartphone app, the Smart Assist app, which works on iOS and Android devices. All these devices are connected control-wise via BLE, so no more infrared syncing them together. So this is gonna be for, for professionals on shoe mounts, on cage mounts. It's gonna fit every need as far as camera mount wireless with our Sennheiser digital transmission path. Sounds amazing. That sounds fantastic. And you told me before we started recording that this has an extremely low latency. Now I'm used to, with the AVX, a 19 millisecond latency, and this has? 1.7 milliseconds of latency. 1.7 milliseconds, like 1.7 gigawatts, something like that. All right, thank you very much, Chris. This looks fantastic. We're on the Atomos booth, and first of all, I have to say thank you very much, Atomos, for sponsoring these new segments. This has been a ton of fun, but now we get to talk about something that is new from Atomos itself in the Atomos cloud. Paul, what have we got here? Well, our latest big news for NAB is that we now have cloud editing. So we have Atomos Edit, which is our latest addition to Atomos Cloud Studio, which of course is the gateway to all the different services. Fantastic. So what this means is that you don't have to download the footage from Frame.io that is being uploaded by a camera to cloud solution like we're doing right now. Our editor could literally be editing footage in the cloud without downloading it at all. Exactly, so we've almost taken out that step. So it really rounds off the solution of what we've got here. So we're using this, just to remind everyone, we're using the same connected hardware, the Ninja 5, the Ninja 5 Plus with the Atomos Connect, we're using the, the Shogun Connect, we're even using the Zato Connect here. And we can take those devices, just in the same way you can record locally, high res file, the other file, the proxy file, is going immediately up into the edit, into Atomos Edit. Straight there, drag it onto the timeline, add some nice titles, graphics, branding, whatever you want to do, and then directly publish to social like YouTube or Vimeo, or export as an XML to, to another craft editor, maybe Final Cut, Premiere, whatever. It's a real end-to-end -end solution. We're, we're allowing someone to get stuff up probably as quick as you're going to be able to get it, straight from glass of the camera all the way through to the timeline and publish. I love it. Absolutely amazing. What a time saver. Thank you very much for showing this to us. Now we're going to see the rest of the show. I am finally on the Aperture booth. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, you know that I've been super excited to come here to see this brand new MC Pro kit. This thing is beautiful. David's going to tell us all about it. What have we got here? All right, guys, so this is a new version of our kit. It's not just a new version of the MC lights, it's also a pro version, which means they are waterproof and they have more punch than the previous versions. So they come in a kit of eight. We have two types of diffusers for them. First, we have a basic diffuser which converts them from a hard punchy source to back to the original one, so it's soft. If you want even more softness, you can round it up, and then it becomes an omnidirectional source. Furthermore, we have another type of diffuser, which you have been requesting many times, and we've heard you. So it is a grid, which attaches just like this, with magnets to the end of the light, so you can narrow down your beam more towards you know, what you want to actually light up and avoid spills which you don't want. And this kit isn't just about storage. The kit actually charges the lights when they're in place here. And I see there's status lights on here to show us the charging status of each one. You just plug the kit into the wall with an yes. AC plug on the outside. We have two options for charging. So option one is just AC power. And option two is actually hooking up a D-tap from a V-Log battery. So if you're set, you don't have you know, a generator, you can still charge these. That's it, folks. I need one of these in my life. We're on the Hedge booth now, and their flagship product is called Hedge, and I've been using it for quite a while to copy all my media off of my cards to my computer safely and securely, but now that app is getting a rebrand, and it's getting some new features. Tell us about it. We're rebranding it to Offshoot, but there was just too much confusion between the, the app name and the company name, so we're diversifying Offshoot at the same time to three versions. We have a native iPad version, Hedge is becoming Offshoot, and then we're going to do an Offshoot Pro version a few weeks from now. Everybody that has a license will automatically roll over into two new one, or if it's an expired license, you can renew it at a discount. Uh, what is actually new about Offshoot Pro is that we built a S3 pipeline together with AWS with the same verification that you're used to from doing local verification, and that's a industry first, because S3 typically isn't built for that purpose, but you want to do a copy to cloud 
as fast as you can with that same peace of mind. Excellent. That sounds awesome. So something's going to really hit that higher end workflow. Uh, what are the price tiers going to be of the three different versions? iPad currently is $50-ish because we think that's a really easy way to get into mobile offloading. And until we release Offshoot, it's going to be discounted to $99. And uh, Offshoot Pro is going to be uh, like a 50% more when we release it. Sounds great. Thanks for the update.